Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Wild Gaming's playthrough of Braden Barty Media's Murder at Blood Mansion. Now, I did a review on this uh, not very long ago at all. You hopefully may have seen it. Uh, it's on the Kickstarter for Murder at Blood Mansion. It's also on our Facebook and our website, of course. Uh, but I do hope you get to see it because this playthrough will just briefly touch on the rules and mechanics while that, uh, that actual review probably goes a little bit more in depth. So before you hear, uh, we have all of the suspects in this game. Uh, the different people in the game, you can see their names here. I've kind of covered them up. Uh, the art is, is awesomely done by Parker Jacobs, who you may be aware of from uh, Yo Gabba Gabba, uh, from the Aquabats, something called Goon Holler, which I'm not familiar with. But uh, my daughter may someday, someday be. Uh, she is a big fan of Yo Gabba Gabba, so that's kind of cool that I got the chance to, to do this and actually get to converse with uh, Braden Barty uh, primarily. Uh, not so much Parker, but uh, still really, really neat. Um, so I have the suspects here, I have their tokens, I have the deck of cards, I have the murder cards, and then I have a couple of cards here just to show you as an example real quick. Uh, but we'll make this fairly quick, uh, just so you can see how this is played. So this is beginning setup. Uh, the way now that I have played it, I've seen another reviewer who showed a video who, who had all these suspect cards out. Uh, the way I normally play it's all these suspect cards are shuffled in the deck, and every suspect card aside from these here are dead end cards, red herrings. People still see S on the back for suspect. They still see that red color. They don't know if it's actually one of these named suspects or if it's a dead end. But, uh, yeah, that's that. So since I showed you that, I'm going to go ahead and throw this back in the deck. Only one of these people here gets shuffled into the deck. There can only be one actual character suspect in the game. And that's really important to know in the setup. So first you pick who's playing. I'm going to play with, uh, we'll add Lady Blood over here since she is the hostess of the evening. We'll add uh, Tabitha over here, why not? Hopefully that's within, I'll put her here, I know that's within camera view. And we'll take uh, Merriweather here, just because he's close by, and he's rocking the uh, the awesome mustache and the unibrow, which, not so awesome, but it's cool anyway. All right, so so I'll be Merriweather, and we'll have two other players here that I'll also use uh, for Tabitha and for Lady Blood. And these are the three people we're playing as. That being said, these three people and their tokens do not get mixed into the deck. The murder suspect in the game is actually going to be one of the people playing, not going to be somebody, you know, random who's not even in the game. So, first thing you're going to do is take these suspect cards of these three people. You're going to shuffle them around until you really don't know what they are, and if you're just really, really good at counting cards or what have you, and, and you think you know which one you have in your hand, you can always say, hey, Lady Blood, Tabitha, somebody else, pick one of these. We'll play with it. So, somebody grabs a card. They put it face down. You take these other two cards and you put them back over here with the other suspects face down so nobody knows what in the world's missing. And you take your tokens. Once again, you stick them in front of you. On these tokens, there is a scheme. Uh, Merryweather's here is to steal a weapon. Um, it's really important to be aware of your scheme. You can only use it once per game. Lady Blood steals a suspect. And Tabitha has a really special one that allows her to slam the door. Now, what that means is she can cancel out any action. And more importantly, she can cancel out anybody's scheme that they play. All you do is you take this token when you want to play that scheme, you flip it over, say that you played that scheme, and that's that. So let's go ahead and get started here. So this is the suspect card I'm keeping. It's going to go in the middle of the deck somewhere. It's going to be shuffled around. We won't know who it is. These are a couple of the other cards you're going to see in this game. So there's a G. That stands for guilt. There's a W. That stands for weapon. There is an A. That stands for action. So we're going to take these murder cards here. Only one of these is going to be chosen. We'll go with this one. Why not? It's flipped over in the middle of the table. It looks like a murder has taken place, everybody, and the weapon has been identified as a stiletto. So that's the weapon everybody's looking for. So any of these W's in here could be that stiletto. And the thing is, every single weapon in the game is actually in this deck. So people can come across weapon cards and have weapon cards in their hand where you see that W. However, it's not the actual weapon, perhaps. The guilt and action cards, the action cards do a variety of things. This one in particular says pick any player and take two cards of your choice from that player. The guilt cards, they have a couple of things of note. Now, once again, I go into more depth on the review, but just so you know, this up here is a point value. It goes anywhere from 5 to 15. Um, this is an icon showing a means of escape for the suspect who actually committed the murder. You have to have two of these icons to escape, as well as the murder weapon, if you are the murderer. If you're not the murderer, you have to have a total number of points here, depending on how many players you're playing with in the game, and you have to have enough of those to convict the murderer as well as the murder weapon, and once again, you have to know who the murderer is, and then you'll read this information down below to tell how you found out about this murderer, so it kind of adds some narrative to the, to the gameplay. You deal out five cards to every player, 
and the person who starts the game first is the person with the most wow this is this is ironic everything's the same so far the person with the most suspect and or weapon cards in their hand it actually looks like she has one suspect i have one weapon so we're tied in the event of a tie the person with the shortest fingers goes first i guess i'll go first i have no idea but we'll, <laughs> we'll call it so we'll have uh, these cards spread out here where you can kind of see the backs of them. This is important in the actual gameplay. You want to make sure every player is holding their cards where people can see the backs. Notice that the letters are in the top left-hand corner. They're not down here on the bottom right, anything like that. So if you have a player in your group that tends to hold their cards a little more this way, which I did, you're really going to have to give them down the road and be like, hey, you need to, you need to fix the way you're holding your cards. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> But yeah, that's that. So this is my hand, and I'm going to get to go first. So I have a weapon card, but it's not the right one. I have an action card there. I have an action card here. I have a couple of guilt cards. Notice that the guilt cards, I have a 15-pointer and a 5-pointer. This one has a key. An important thing to know about the keys, this may change in actual production, but right now the key art uh, can vary. Uh, for the purposes of escaping, if you're the murderer, any one or any, sorry, any two keys, regardless of art, are able to be used to escape. So let's go ahead and start. So on your turn, you can draw a card and you can play a card. And it can happen in any order you desire. When you play a card, you play it onto the discard pile. You can actually play it without consequence, literally just discarding it. Or you can play it, you know, doing what it says. I'm going to go ahead and draw my first card. And it is a dead end. But nobody else knows that. So let's go ahead and say, well, she has a suspect here. Let's play pick any player, take two cards of your choice from that player. And I'm going to look at uh, Lady Blood's say I want uh, this suspect card and I want this action card. Now Lady Blood might be like, well, obviously he doesn't have the actual suspect. Now you will notice I've already got, wow, seven cards in hand. I've already drew a card. I've already played a card. So what happens here is you have to absolutely discard down to five cards. And when you discard, you cannot play actions for their action values. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of these two red herrings and be like, yep, sorry guys, I didn't have anything after all. So... Let's get rid of those. I'm down to five cards, and it's Lady Blood's turn. So Lady Blood, she only has three cards in hand. Once again, you can draw a card. You can play a card. So I'll just draw a card for her. Notice she has two guilt cards with the matching bicycle, unicycle. Well, it's not really a unicycle, I guess. The art here is a little bit different, too, come to think of it. But she has two cards with the bicycle. So if she is the murderer, and she had the murder weapon and these two cards, and she knew the, she was the murderer, she could actually get away. So that's a pretty good hand. Um, she has an action card. Pick any player. They must give you all their weapon cards. And then, so she's going to play that. She's going to take my weapon card from me. And she's going to be like, well, crap, that's not the right one. So Tabitha over here, she's got four guilt cards and an action. And her action says, uh, pick any player. They must give you all their suspect cards. Right now, none of us have suspects. So she really can't do anything. So what she's going to do, she's going to draw this action card. Pick any player. They must give you two cards of their choice. And she's just going to keep that for now. So she's got to get rid of something because she is over the limit here. So I would say one of these five-point cards she might want to get rid of. So there's a ship, there's a train, there's different things here. I'm going to go ahead and put this one down. Why not? And we'll go ahead and pass on to Merryweather's turn. So Merryweather sees that there's an action next on the deck. He's got some decent actions, but they don't really come in handy right now. He's going to go ahead and draw this next action. And it says next player loses turn, so why the heck not? Even though that would give me five cards, I could have not played that, but it's all right. So we're going back to Tabitha over here. Tabitha's going to draw the next action card because really, she don't really need any of this other stuff right now. Pick any player, put all their suspect and false weapon cards in the discard pile. Now this is a, is a gutsy card here. This is a very interesting one. If you notice it says false weapon, it doesn't say anything about false suspects. So all of their suspects, even if they have the actual suspect card, if you played this on them, they'd have to put it in the discard pile. That could be good, that could be bad, because the discard pile is public knowledge and anyone can look through it at any time if they desire to do so, and technically when you're throwing stuff in there, you should be throwing it separately anyway so people can see it. So, so that can make it public knowledge. If you do that, then everybody's going to know who the murderer is and it's going to be a race to see who can get what they need to win first, so I'll leave that up to you and your own gameplay. I'm going to say she wants to keep these actions for a rainy day, so she's going to get rid of this five. Hopefully she's not the murderer, she's, she's getting rid of some means of escape. Of potential escape um, for Merriweather here he really once again has nothing to do he's just gonna draw this next guilt card and he's got two matching keys in a two to four player game you need 40 points of guilt points to convict a murderer and you need the murder weapon in a five to six player game you only need 30 so just keep that in mind right now I have 35 if I wanted to make a conviction I'd have to have the murder weapon as well 
Uh, but I still wouldn't be able to do it without five more guild points. So we'll go ahead and pass it on to Lady Blood. Lady Blood's got an action. Finally, take one card from the player on your immediate right. So she could actually take one of these cards from me. However, she's got five cards right now, and she's okay with saving that for a time that maybe I have something a little bit more desirable. And look at this. Tabitha's got a suspect card coming up next, so she might like that, but it's another dead end. So what does Tabitha do here? Does she want to keep that as a decoy, or she just want to go ahead and get rid of it? She's got some good cards to hold on to here, so I would say get rid of it. So we'll do that. Back to Merryweather. Merryweather once again has a lot of a lot of good high point guilt cards and a couple of action cards, but he could use five more points in there. There's the five more points I need actually right there. The thing is, maybe I want to chance it for a 10-pointer or a 15-pointer later because I really can't have six cards and I don't want to get rid of these actions. So I'm going to get rid of one of the two five points. So let's get rid of... Hmm. Let's get rid of this one. All right. I'll put these down. Lady Blood has a suspect card to draw. This could be the right one. And it is. Look at that. It's Tabitha, so she now knows, and she does not need these these bicycles, unfortunately. But she now knows who the, who the person is. Now all she needs is to find the stiletto, and then she needs enough guilt points to accuse Tabitha of the murder. She definitely wants to keep this a secret from Tabitha and every other player, so she's the one that can solve that murder and get away first. So now what is she going to do here? She kind of wants to use a chance to get some guilt cards. So she's going to go ahead and take one card from the person on her right. She's going to try to get a guilt card from Merriweather here. Maybe it'll help her be able to accuse the murderer. So she picks. She says, hey, Merriweather, I want that one in the middle there. I feel like your sandwich in between those two because it's important. It is a 15-pointer, so she was not wrong. Um, so she's got 15, 10, 5, and 5. So we're going to get rid of one of these fives. I could get rid of this rifle, but I kind of want to hold on to it because... If I do find a murder weapon, I want a decoy murder weapon in my hand. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of... We're getting rid of this one, I guess. So I'll put this over here. Tabitha will draw an action card. And it's a slam the door. So much like Tabitha's slam the door scheme, the slam the door action card can cancel out actions by other players. The thing that the slam the door card cannot do that the scheme can do once again. It can cancel out their scheme as well, not just the card. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, she's got a slam the door card, so next time somebody tries to take something from her, she might want to play that. Now, she still doesn't know who it is. She still probably wants to save up some guilt cards, but she's got a chance here. Look at this. They must give you all their suspect cards, so she's going to go ahead and play that. I would say that's probably the best move she can do. So she's going to pick Lady Blood, and she's going to play Give Me All Your Suspect Cards. So Lady Blood, she has no way to stop it, so she has to give this face down to Tabitha. So Tabitha now knows. So Tabitha has to discard something here. So I guess we'll get rid of this without any action once again. It is, it is considered dead weight. It was an extra card in hand at the end of the turn. She'd already taken her action. So we'll go ahead and draw a guilt card here. So let's go do this as well. He's like, well, I've seen her do that to, to her. And now I'm interested because Tabitha seemed to have a, an interesting expression on her face afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. I'm going to get in the know as well. But Tabitha has this nice little slam card. She's like, nope, not yet. We have another guilt card here for Lady Blood. And guess what? It is a 10-pointer. That's pretty nice. All right, so we got 15. We got 25. We got 35. We got 40 points here. So we'd have enough to accuse her if only we had the right weapon in hand. So let's see what happens there. Tabitha draws a guilt card. Maybe it's something she needs to get away. And it is a matching key. Look at that, guys. So she as well just needs the word murder weapon and she could actually leave and get away with murder she only has five cards so we'll go ahead and pass on to Merriweather who draws another guilt card put all their cards into this card pile minus the actual weapon and suspect card he'll play this so he's gonna go ahead and play this on Tabitha so we're gonna find out if that is the actual suspect card that she has or not she's gonna slam the door because that's too powerful she's <laughs> slamming the door on that action and, and Merriweather's foiled again he's like oh man what I can't do anything about this. So there's an action card here next. Lady Blood takes this. Pick any player. Take one card of your choice from that player. She likes that. But, uh, yeah. I guess she likes that enough. She wants to go ahead and get rid of the rifle because if somebody else gets the weapon card and she thinks they have that right weapon card, she might be able to take that from them. So we'll go ahead and go back to Lady Blood. Or, no, sorry, Tabitha, who has a weapon card to draw next, guys. Will she get away? We'll find out. Guess what? It's the stiletto. So, Tabitha can now reveal to everybody, yes, I did it. I had the stiletto, but I had the keys. 
to the door. I got away, locked everybody in while everybody was busy accusing each other. I'm gone. So the text down here does not always work out for the murderer. It's more of accusing somebody for the murderer. So that's the end of that. Had it been another way around, let's say that, uh, that she had drawn that weapon since she had all the cards she needed. Let's say that she happened to draw that on her turn. She had that weapon in her hand, and she has everything she needs, so she could say, all right, I've previously found out it was Tabitha that committed the murder. Tabitha had that weapon once upon a time hanging on a nail in her bedroom. I remember seeing it. She had a black, suspicious handbag. It had traces of blood on it. She was seen scuffling with the victim before the murder, and the victim kept warning everyone that she was going to kill someone. So she definitely did it. So that's another way that could play out depending on who got what they needed to win. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Murder at Blood Mansion. For uh, my feedback on how I liked the game, please do read my review online. Once again, at the, the Wild Gaming website or at our Facebook site. If you have any questions, if you want to see any other games uh, that I previously reviewed or maybe another game uh, that I have not yet reviewed, do let me know. And if you are a game producer and you have a game for me to review, just reach out to me. I'd be happy to do so. Thank you very much. Have a great day, guys.